Do you have Jesus in you? This is a very, very important question because this question is about your faith. If you truly believe in Christ Jesus, you have Christ Jesus in you. But you might say, you know, I know Jesus and I love Jesus, but I'm not sure if it is very important to have Jesus in me or not. No, that is a very, very important question. Now, if I say, I know about Korean food, I love Korean food. But if I say, I own Korean restaurant, that is a totally different level of question, different level of answer. You know, if I own Korean restaurant, that involves I know about Korean food and also I love Korean food. But just because you say I love, I know Korean food and I love, I love it, doesn't mean that you will love it forever. You will have the responsibility about the, about the Korean food. So it's the same thing. Same concept. Just because you say, I know about Jesus, I love Jesus, doesn't mean that you have Christ Jesus in you. If you have Jesus in you, that's a whole different level of faith. But that is, that faith is the real faith. Today, Apostle Paul is ending his epistle to the church of Corinth. The chapter 13 of 2 Corinthians is the last chapter. But in the last chapter, he is asking this very simple, profound question. How, you need to examine your faith. If you truly believe in Christ Jesus, you need to ask this yourself. But how do you know if you have the true faith? It is by knowing that Jesus is in you. If you have Jesus in you, that means you have the right faith. But if you do not have Jesus in you, you have the wrong faith. That is the question. But why, do, why does he ask this question at the end of this epistle? It can really tell us, it can tell us that um, just because you've been in the church for a long time doesn't mean that you have the right faith. You need to examine this true faith. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 5, to see what kind of faith is the true faith. So let's look at the passage together. For indeed he was crucified because of the weakness, yet he lives because of the power of God. For we too are weak in him, yet we will live with him because of the power of God directed towards you. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not? Recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test. Now, there are two points I want to make. First one is, how you know that you have Jesus in you. The second one is, how can you have, how you can have Jesus in you. Okay, so let's look at uh, the, uh, the passage together. So how do you know that Jesus is in you. Now let's look at the verse 5 again. That Jesus Christ is in you. So the first, if Jesus is in you, that he lives in you, you are not separable from him. Now if you go to a grocery store, you see vegetables and uh, food in front of you. But when you consume it, when you buy it, and when you eat it, those vegetables or those food will become part of you. And they will not be separable. They will be inseparable. But until you do that, the food or vegetables in front of you are just the food in front of you. It's not a part of you. John chapter 6, Jesus says, You need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. If you do not eat or drink me, then you have no part in me. But if you eat me, drink me, then I will be in you and you will be in me. You, in other words, you will be inseparable. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, Apostle Paul uses marriage as an illustration of relationship between Jesus and the church. What is the marriage? Until you get married, then you are not one body with your spouse. Husband and wife they get married together. It is not just a ceremony for one day or two days, but it's a ceremony of two people, two bodies become one body. But before the marriage, no matter how long they dated, even if they dated for 25 years, they're still separable people. But when, once they become one body through marriage, they are not separable. And Paul is using it as uh, to illustrate 
inseparable relationship between Jesus and the church. Jesus is the head of the church, and church is the body of Christ. They are one body. They are not separable. That's what it means to have Jesus in us. We're not separable. And then second, because we are not separable, Jesus lives in us, we will live out Him. So let's look at today's passage again. Look at verse 4. It says, For indeed, He was crucified because of weakness, yet He lives because of the power of God. Who is He? Jesus. Paul is talking about the gospel truth, the core message of Jesus Christ. It says, Jesus died and rose again. Now, this is the gospel. But this gospel message is not an information somewhere out there, or it's not information uh, put in the uh, bookshelf in the library. But the gospel message, Jesus' death and resurrection, is my message. It is my life as well. How do we know? Look at this verse. For we too were weak in Him, yet we will live with Him because of the power of God directed towards you. What does it really show you in this passage? It says, yes, Jesus died and rose again, but that is also lived out in us. Because Jesus lives in me, He is being lived out. I die with Jesus, and I rose with Jesus. That is being signified, symbolized in the baptism, as we see in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 4. But not just in the baptism ceremony, but also in our, through our life. We live His death, and we live His resurrection. And we will be resurrected, and we'll be in the glorious body. But in, even in our life, we live out this gospel of Christ Jesus. That is surely the evidence of Jesus being in you. If Jesus truly lives in you, the gospel is not an information. The gospel is the transformation of your life, and you will live out the gospel of Christ Jesus. And also, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, that the Holy Spirit lives in you. So if Jesus lives in you, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ Jesus, Spirit of God, also lives in you. If the Holy Spirit does not live in you, you do not belong to Him. That's what Romans 8, 9 says. In other words, you're not Christian if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. And verse 10, it says, Christ is in you. So it is the inseparable truth that if Jesus lives in you, Holy Spirit lives in you. Now, if the Holy Spirit lives in you, Romans 8, 13, you will put, your, you will put, the, put to death the deeds of your flesh, meaning that you will not live like the world anymore. If you still live like you used to, and 10 years ago, 5 years ago, or 20 years ago, that you are not putting death to the deeds of your flesh, but you are not led by the Holy Spirit, you are led by your own gut, your desire, that means you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, that means you don't have Jesus in you, you are not a Christian. But if you truly have, are a Christian, if you are truly born again Christian, you have Christ Jesus in you, that means you have Holy Spirit in you, and every day you are putting death to the deeds of your flesh, so you are being led by the Holy Spirit, of course, we're not perfect, but every day we see the changes in our life that we're not living like we used to, but we are becoming more holy, holy, because He lives in us and we are led by the Holy Spirit. So that is the evidence to show you how you know that you have Christ Jesus in you. That means you, if you live a holier, the sanctified life, if you live the sanctification, meaning becoming more like Christ Jesus, that is showing that Christ truly lives in you. And lastly, if you truly have Jesus in you, you will bear much fruit. John chapter 15, verse 5, If I am in you and you are in me, you will bear much fruit. 
Now, what kind of fruit is this? Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, 23, it shows the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Again, if you have Jesus Christ in you, you have the Holy Spirit in you. That means you will bear much fruit in the Holy the Love, joy, peace, and kindness, goodness, and self-control. You see the list of those, those fruits of the Holy Spirit. Are you bearing those fruits in your life? That shows that's the evidence of Jesus being in you. So we have these evidences of Jesus being in us. The next question is, how can you have Jesus in you? And John chapter 15, verse 10, clearly answers that if you keep my commandment, if you keep Jesus' commandment, He will be in us and you will be in Him. So that's a very simple answer. If you obey Jesus, then He will be in you. But how do we obey? Is there any model, example? In that same verse, John chapter 15, verse 10, As I obeyed my Father, if you obey me. So Jesus is the sure foundation and example of obedience. That we follow Jesus. And we obey Him as He obeyed His Father. That is how Jesus is in us and we are in Him. So obey Christ to Jesus. Obey Him. Follow Him. He will be in you and you will be in Him. So how should we live? First, if you have Christ Jesus in you, you will love His Word. Jesus is the Word of God according to John chapter 1, verses 1-3. through 3. So if Jesus is in you, then you will have natural tendency, natural desire to read, meditate, and obey His Word. In other words, if Bible is in front of you, but if you have no desire to open up, if you have no desire to read, but you have desire to read all the other books and all the other watch all the other movies, that means you don't have love for His Word. You don't have love for Him. That might be the reason, that might be the evidence that you don't have Christ Jesus in you. So see, start with the love for His Word. If you truly have Christ Jesus in you, you will love His more, love His Word more than anything else. Now secondly, if, you, if Jesus is in you, then you are uh, His body. Again, you are inseparable uh, from Him. You became a part of His body. So that you became His body. But it doesn't mean that you have the perfect body. Uh, just because you have Christ Jesus in you, that means you are uh, your hands and feet and you have all the others. No, you became part of His body, meaning that you have another, you need another parts of the body. In other words, you need the church. You will love His body. You will love His church. So, first of all, you love His word. And the second, you will love His church. So you cannot just stand alone by yourself. You will want to, uh, you will want to join the church, and you will want to serve in the church, serve one another as His hands and feet together. Because Jesus lives in you, and He is the head of you, and you are, maybe you are a hand, you are feet, you are eye, and you are nose. You need to work together. You need other parts of the church. Some people say, you know, I already have a lot of spiritual gifts, so I don't really need other people uh, to work with me. That is completely wrong. If you truly have Jesus in you, you will need other brothers and sisters to work together for His kingdom. And lastly, if you have Jesus Christ in you, you will love the world. As Jesus loved the world, we will love the world. Not in the way that, not in the way that uh, those secular people love the world. We'll love as Jesus loved. How did Jesus love the world? On Matthew chapter nine verse thirty-five, he traveled uh, all around the places to see, uh, to heal the sick and to meet the needs of the people and to proclaim the kingdom of God. Likewise, we will become his hands and feet, so that we will reach out the world, we will reach reach the lost people, meet their needs, and share the gospel of Christ Jesus with them. So that will be the natural tendency in our life because Jesus lives in us. We will love to go out being His hands and feet to proclaim His Word everywhere so that more
more people would come to know Him and more people would truly see the glory of God through us. So, let's truly examine ourselves first if we truly have the faith in Christ Jesus by, uh, by examining if Christ Jesus truly lives in us. If you, if you truly have Jesus in you and you will love His Word, you will love His church, and you will love the world as Jesus loved so that we can all go and share the gospel of Christ Jesus. Now, as we are ending this uh, Corinthian series, I'm sure that you have learned something about the church. Church is not perfect. There is a problem, but the gospel is the answer. Jesus is always the answer so that we can always go back to Christ, go back to His gospel, and then truly examine ourselves if we truly have the faith in Him. As we can see, the last epistle, last uh, the part of this epistle, he pointed out this very fundamental question. Just because you are in the current church, just because you are in the church, you have served for so many years, if you do not have the right faith, if you do not have Christ Jesus in you, it's all, um, it is all wasting. So we need to ask this question, do I really have Christ Jesus in me? It's not enough to ask, do you know about Jesus or do you love Jesus? If you truly have Christ Jesus in you, you will truly love Him and you will do everything that He wants you to do. So let's examine ourselves and let's also share this message with others, the people in the church, so that they are not coming to the church just for the sake of fellowship or just for the moral improvement, but they will truly come to the church and join the church and the uh, work as the body of Christ Jesus uh, through, through examining themselves to see if they are truly uh, in the right faith, if they truly have Christ Jesus in them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for giving us this challenging question. Father, I pray that we will not just assume that we, are, we have the true faith just because we have been in the church for so many years. But Father, please illumine ourselves. Truly, truly help us to examine if we truly have the faith in you, if we have you in us, Lord. Father, I pray for those who are listening to this message, watching this message. If they do not have Christ Jesus in them, Father, I pray that you would convict their sins in their life, in their heart, so that they will come, they will repent of their sins and they will come to know you. They will truly believe in you and they will truly have your presence in them so that they will go out and share the gospel of Christ Jesus uh, with everyone that they meet for your kingdom, for your glory. Father, we thank you, praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray it. Amen.